Hello everyone, my name is David McKittrick. I am Outreach and Training Manager at a company called Blue Marble Geographics. We're a small GIS software development company headquartered in the state of Maine in the Northeast US. And today I'm going to be talking about our, our primary application, Global Mapper. And specifically, as you can see on the screen, we're going to take a look at a, a scenario where we're going to sculpt the terrain. We're going to generate some surface data from a point cloud and ultimately we're going to do some sculpting as well. So a quick look at the agenda for our brief presentation. We're going to start by uh, introducing the software at a high level. I know there's likely many of you watching this presentation are not familiar with Global Mapper. So I'm going to give you a high level introduction. Um, then we're again, as I mentioned, going to specifically get into looking at a particular component. Uh, we're going to try to create some terrain data from a point cloud and we're going to use LiDAR data. Um, you could uh, derive a surface from any type of point cloud data. But we're going to base this workflow on some LiDAR data. And as a byproduct of generating a surface or as a kind of a supplementary component, we're also going to initiate a process called hydro flattening, where we're going to take the elevations in accompanying vector features, polygons and lines. We're going to actually use a polygon and a line for this and override the elevations to burn a modified surface. Essentially, this is sculpting terrain based on the elevation in an existing feature. And you'll see this in, in the uh, uh, in the workflow just a little bit later. Um, then when we finished with that workflow, this is where we can have some fun. We're actually going to do some terrain painting. We're going to draw some uh, terrain surface. This allows us to modify a surface based on a simple drawing process, whether it's a line, a point, or a polygon. We can use that as the basis for uh, a local modification of our surface. So as I mentioned, for those of you maybe not familiar with Global Mapper, a quick overview. What exactly is it? Well, it's desktop GIS software. Um, very powerful, very inexpensive. Um, we often hear it described as the Swiss Army knife of GIS. A lot of folks have it in their toolkit because it does a lot of things. It does all of your digitizing, uh, drawing, thematic mapping, map publishing, etc., etc. But it's Strength really is in the 3D space, as you'll see um, in uh, 3D analysis and, and surface generation, etc., etc. Um, one of the defining characteristics is its interoperability, the fact that it supports so much data, both for import and for export. And a lot of folks have it in their toolkit for that specific reason, its ability to, to work with any data and indeed to convert that data for, uh, from one format into another, perhaps for migrating into another platform. So supporting, a, it says over 300, I believe it's more like 330 data formats that are supported. As I mentioned, it does include a complete suite of vector and raster processing tools. And I know that's a kind of a broad sweep but all your digitizing, thematic mapping, attribute management tools are included in there, as well as raster tools for rectification, for uh, raster classification, raster calculation, um, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all included as, the pa as part of the package, as part of the Global Mapper software. As I mentioned, it, it has a particular strength in 3D analysis, uh, certainly supporting point cloud data and processing point cloud data. Um, but beyond that, 3D analysis for things like watershed um, delineation, uh, view shed analysis um, and we'll see some of those are some of the 3d tools as we get into a very brief demonstration in this presentation now there is an optional add-on that you can plug into global mapper it's the lidar module um, many of you are working with point cloud data lidar or other point cloud data sets and it really is something we recommend uh, for automatic point cloud classification for feature extraction from a point cloud um, or the newest tool in this module is our pixels to points tool which allows you to generate a point cloud from uh, images, from overlapping images. Typically, those are collected uh, by a drone. So it allows you to generate 3D data uh, from, from that, uh, those source images. So a LiDAR module, definitely recommended if you have uh, or are using uh, point cloud data in any way, shape, or form. So as a quick illustration of some of the capabilities of Global Mapper, we're going to take a look at the process of generating a surface. Now, my source data is some LiDAR data. Uh, as you can see, I've got a, some imagery on here just for a visual reference. I also have a point cloud. Um, this point cloud has already been filtered, so the points you're seeing on, on my screen are ground points. We're generating a DTM. Now, we could simply run through this process right now, but I'm actually going to modify the surface slightly, and I'm going to do that based on a couple of vector features. 
Um, I'm going to turn the point cloud off temporarily and over here on the right you'll see a polygon um, outlining the extent of this pond or this lake. Um, if I use an info tool to get some information about this vector pond or vector feature you'll see it has an elevation and this forms the basis for what we're about to do because we're going to have Global Mapper read that elevation for this extent. We're going to hydro flatten this area based on simply the fact that this polygon has an elevation attribute. Also in this little workspace we have a linear feature. Now this linear feature um, represents a stream. Um, every vertex in this stream has an elevation once again and this is going to be used to modify the surface on a local context as the stream flows downhill. Every vertex has a, a Z value and or a Z value and that is going to be burned into the terrain. With So with the presence of these two features we're going to modify our surface. We're going to generate a surface but we're going to modify it. Um, essentially sculpt it. I know my presentation is about terrain sculpting. These tools allow us to sculpt the terrain uh, based on pre-existing uh, elevation values. So very quickly running through the procedure, um, I'm generating a raster elevation grid. We've got a tool for doing that very quickly. I'm not going to dwell on the settings here. Um, I'm going to define my resolution. It's two times what would be the point spacing within this layer, which I believe is maybe one or two points per square meter. So not a very high resolution model. The key here in this uh, dialog box is the fact that we're using the 3D line and area features as what we refer to as break lines, but it's also hydro hydro flattening the pond. In other words, we're going to modify the surface based on the presence of the elevation values in these vector features. And we're going to feather the edges by a multiple, again, of our point spacing, three times the point spacing. It'll mean that those these flattened surfaces don't cut into the terrain, but rather gradually integrate into the terrain. It creates these slopes around the edge, so it's not going to be a, a hard drop off, if you like. So just quickly going through the procedure, I'm just going to mo uh, limit the extent just in the interest of the limited time we have available here. I'm just going to draw a, a box around the area I'm interested in. It's going to constrain my surface to that extent. You can see that box noted on my background screen. I'll quickly click OK and we will as you can see, generate a raster surface. I can turn off the point cloud that served its function. We now have a surface model. If I need to, I can pop this up as my 3D viewer. I've got a small section here, obviously, so we're not seeing the full extent. But you can see now we have a raster surface that would be the basis for any type of um, analysis, any type of terrain analysis, including things like watershed analysis or viewshed analysis. Now, speaking of watershed analysis, it's quite clear here if you're looking at what I generated that we have this distinct river channel uh, defined by that line feature. This is my hydro flatten or my, my break line defining uh, the stream. Also quite clear that we have a surface where the pond is located which is at a very specific elevation as well. In other words we were able to sculpt the terrain based on the presence of these vector features. Now hydro flattening is a common use case for this obviously a, a pond we want a flat surface but this can be this function can be applied in a lot of different situations. For instance, in an urban context, your, your flattened surfaces may be your building footprints, where you define a height and it would generate a precise surface with every building integrated into that raster surface um, at that specified height. So a lot of different variations on that theme. Now, the final workflow I'm going to show you is a little more creative and a little more a kind of freehand, if you like, because while we can sculpt the terrain based on vector features, we can also do that uh, manually. Now, for this, I'm just going to drag some points onto my view here, just to give me a visual reference. For this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a local modification to my surface to create a dam. Um, let me turn off a couple of my other vector features. We've, we're done with the vector layers that defined our hydro flattened areas. But what I want to do now is I'm going to draw a line feature that denotes the uh, a dam that I want to create. Now, rather than simply drawing it as a vector feature, I'm actually going to draw the terrain itself. The tool we're going to use is right here. And this is my terrain painting tool, uh, within which there are a number of options, as you'll see. Uh, drawing terrain based on a defined height or based on lowering or increasing the height as necessary. In my example, I'm going to draw a specific height. I'm literally going to draw some terrain and I can do that based on a particular type of brush. In my example, I'm going to draw a line.
That line can have a, a side width, a brush size if you like. I'm going to make this five times the grid spacing. That will allow me to, to define what the width of my dam is. And I can define a specific height. In my case, because I'm setting a height, I simply type what that height would be. I'm going to make this 16 meters. This is an absolute height in this case. And I can feather that as well. Again, based on a multiple of the grid spacing, I can make sure that that integrates cleanly into the surrounding terrain rather than having a, a vertical drop off. Now with those settings applied here, you can see on the screen my cursor, the little red circle denoting what I'm painting, the blue circle indicating the extent of my feathering. All I need to do now is simply draw what appears to be a vector line. Now let me try that one more time. Uh, let me make sure I'm setting the appropriate height. There we go. Oh, I'm in trace mode. My apologies. Let's try that one final time here. And there we go. Now I'm drawing this again, like drawing a line. Anybody who's used any drawing tools, it's defining what I'm, my line is. Except in this case, what I've drawn is terrain. And you can see that surface now modified representing this dam. This allowed me to sculpt the terrain. Let me turn off the points representing the extent of my dam. And one final time, we'll go ahead and pop up our 3D view. A little bit far away here, but we can zoom in a little closer and we can see what I was able to sculpt simply by drawing a very simple line into the terrain. So that was just one very quick demonstration of some of Global Mapper's terrain analysis capabilities. There's a lot more in there, obviously, uh, we didn't have a chance to show. Um, if you have questions on this workflow or indeed on any of Global Mapper's tools, uh, you can send an email to geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com or if you would like more information on the software or to download a free trial, you can go to globalmapper.com. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.